morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. morning. Well, congratulations. Congratulations. Do you believe you call yourself the bad news babes? <laughs> well, a strong win over a championship congressional women's softball game at the game last night. I'm very proud of our team, though, from Congress. Democratic women, Republican women, senators and House members in unity playing the press. Um, I wasn't asking for any credentials of some of those, shall we say, younger players, uh, but it was a great game. You did well. And we all should be very proud that the event raised $365,000 to benefit Young Survival, uh, the Young Survival Coalition of Breast Cancer Charity, especially geared to young women who are geared, who are diagnosed with cancer. And it was always a joy to see the survivors last, last, there last night. We're very proud of Debbie Wasserman Schultz, our own young survivor who has been the leader in all of this. Speaking of health care, we're very proud that over the weekend, 140 members of the House Democratic Caucus participated in events across the country, uh, events that were about um, town halls, press conferences, online, all the rest, uh, talking about uh, preserving the pre-existing condition, preserving health, uh, access to quality, affordable health care, it was just beautiful to behold the stories that people told about their situations. I had one in the Bay Area with my colleagues, Jackie Spear and Mike Thompson, and then in Southern California with uh, Congresswoman Judy Chu, but members again, this was a drumbeat across America, which will continue on the issue, the very important issue to America's working families, health care. It's a health issue. It's also a financial security issue because of uh, the cost of prescription drugs which we are determined to do something about, hopefully uh, in a bipartisan way. But in the meantime, we have to stop the Republican and the President's assault on the pre-existing condition benefit on the Affordable Care Act. It's just remarkable uh, that the uh, Affordable Care Act is the law of the land. It is the responsibility of the Justice Department to defend the law of the land in court. Instead, this administration has instructed the Justice Department to oppose the law of the land and completely undo the Affordable Care Act, including removing the benefit of pre-existing conditions, lifetime limits on uh, uh, insurance that insurance companies are supposed to provide. The list goes on and on. Also, uh, now this week we are coming toward the end of the appropriation, uh, passing all of our appropriations bills. Uh, it is a, a, a wonderful. Uh, process to behold. I'm a, from the culture of the Appropriations Committee, so I have always said, left to their own devices, the appropriators, Democrats and Republicans working together, uh, can produce good legislation, and they are. Uh, and I am trying to defend uh, the number at which they are writing the bills in our, our um, conversations with the White House about lifting, uh, lifting the caps. And so that's where we are on that. We're hopefully making progress as we come to the end of passing our own bills. In addition to that, um, uh, we all know that we want to avoid uh, sequestration, that we want to avoid a continuing resolution, uh, but we have, to, we have to meet the needs of the American people in a way that is reflected in our appropriations bills. So, so we will almost be finished this week. There might be one for after the 4th of July. A tribute to Stanley Hoyer, who our uh, leader on the floor, who has, in spite of the interventions from the other side for a roll call vote on every amendment, uh, nonetheless tried to stay on schedule with all of this. And uh, next week we'll take up a few more bills, as well as a very important legislation for election security. Uh, Congresswoman Zoe Lofgren, chair of the House uh, Administration Committee, whose jurisdiction this bill is, will be putting forth legislation. But it's only <laughs> step one. It's about, it's about preventing foreign intervention uh, in, in our elections, but also it put, this particular piece of it is about protecting our electoral system and uh, allocating resources to help states do so. When we come back, working with many of our members on other uh, proposals that they have and trying to work in the most bipartisan way possible, we will have other legislation to prevent foreign intervention, including the duty to report rules 
and sanctions that will be put forth as a warning to countries not to interfere into our elections, especially Russia, and uh, the, uh, legislation to promote transparency and accountability in the legislation. Uh, this is, again, about the integrity of our elections. Uh, obviously, it's very clear that the Russians disrupted our elections. There's no doubt in terms of the intelligence reporting at the highest confidence level that that happened and that it is, continues to happen. And yet the President of the United States, who takes an office to protect and defend our Constitution and therefore our democracy, uh, is saying that that Russian interference in our election, that charge, is a hoax. And that, in fact, not only does he call it a hoax and not want to do anything to stop it, he and his comments have given a green light to the Russians to continue to do it. It's, it's really quite stunning. So there we are. We have uh, uh, the um, leader in the Senate, the Grim Reaper, still saying he's going to stop any legislation that goes over there. I hope that he will honor his oath of office by helping to protect our democracy, by protecting the integrity uh, of our elections. So this is the day we welcome Prime Minister Trudeau to the Capitol, as it turns out, in a timely fashion for me to, um, uh, what would be the word, pay off my debt, the bet, is that what the word? Settle the debt. A settle, okay. Settle the debt with beautiful California chocolate, California almonds, that's how we say it in California, almonds, California walnuts, California pistachios, California your wine, uh, that we get back to the chocolates, because we'll have more than one variety. And um, to do so, uh, congratulating the rafters, but also saying that they won against mighty champs, the San Francisco, the Golden State Warriors, soon to come to reside in San Francisco. And today at 3 o'clock, the women play Sweden. Isn't that exciting? And soccer. At that time, I will be settling the debt at 3 o'clock at our press event with the, uh, with the Prime Minister. We'll talk about other things, including trade, I'm sure, but we have to settle up first. Any questions? No. Yes, sir. Iran shot down an unmanned drone. Uh, it was unarmed in international waters. The President says that Iran has made a big mistake, and Iran says that it's ready for war. I know that you've called for a second all-member briefing, yes. but how do you think that the administration should respond? Well, first of all, we are going to, I'm going to leave here, and the reason we called the meeting earlier today, and thank you for accommodating that, is that at 11 o'clock we will have a, a, a briefing, I think it's now expanded to a gang of 20, oh, but that includes leadership and uh, senior members, <coughs> Democrats and Republicans, House and Senate, on committees of jurisdiction. And so we'll learn more in that uh, briefing as to what is happening there. I think it's a dangerous situation. The high tension wires are up in the region. Uh, we have to uh, uh, be uh, strong and strategic about how we protect our interests. We also cannot be reckless uh, in what we do. So it'll be interesting to see what they have to say, whether the, uh, I don't think the president wants to go to war. There's no appetite for going to war in our country. And uh, so we wanna see what they have to say uh, and then I have called for a broader briefing for more members, uh, but they're starting with this briefing this morning. So uh, this afternoon, from between 4 and 5, I'll have a meeting for my members to hear from some experts on the Iran project, uh, Wendy Sherman, um, Ambassador Wendy Sherman, Ambassador William Lurz, head of the Iran project, Wendy Lurz, our former ambassador who helped negotiate the Iran uh, a nuclear agreement, as well as uh, John Brennan. Madam Speaker. Yes, ma'am. Madam Speaker, uh, in look, first of all, can we ask, um, well, I'll, I'll do it separately myself. Let me go to my question. In the conversations about race in the 2020 campaign, and the you are the leader of the Democratic Party, and there's been a back and forth between Vice President Biden and some of the candidates. Do you think that is helpful to the party to sort of fight that fight over who best represents the party when it comes to sensitivities about race? Do you think that there are apologies owed or should be extended? And is this helpful to the Democrats at this time? I think that authenticity is the most important uh, characteristic that uh, candidates have to convey mm -hmm. to the American people. And Joe Biden is authentic. Uh, he has lived his life 
uh, he, he considers certain things a resource that he has worked across the aisle. That's what he was saying. That's not what this election is about. This election is about how we connect with the American people addressing their kitchen table needs. For us to spend time on an issue like this, which is important, but it's not central to what the election is about. What the election is about is the financial stability and well-being of America's working families. Central to that is lowering health care costs by lowering the cost of prescription drugs, bigger paychecks by creating more opportunities, building the infrastructure of America in a green way, and having cleaner government by giving them the assurance that what we do here is in the public and the people's interest, not the special dark money interest. That's what the election is about. So while we all have a great vision, all of our candidates, and I'm proud of every one of them, have a great vision about our country and how we go forward, know their specialties very well and have good judgment and can uh, talk strategically about how they will get it done. Just watch them. I can't wait to see the debates. But all of that is up here, the vision, the knowledge, the strategic thinking heart to heart where they connect with the American people, assuring them that they have an understanding their hopes and dreams, aspirations, fears, as well as uh, apprehensions. That's what the election will be about. Mr. Yes, ma'am. Madam Speaker, thank you. Um, but on the same topic, I think the argument from Senator Booker and others, of course, is that Vice President Biden is disconnecting with a large group of Americans, especially African Americans, who have a problem with his rhetoric. Um, of course, as you say, Senator Biden or Vice President Biden is saying authentically he feels strongly about what he said, that it was proper. What do you think about Vice President Biden's words referencing his work with segregationists and talking about his idea of civility? I uh, have answered that question. I, I, that's all I'm going to say about it. I'm, I, we have massive challenges uh, to our democracy, whether it's the, the uh, integrity of our elections, whether it's the values in our uh, uh, budgets that we put forth, whether it's the respect for the people of our country, a nation of immigrants, unless you're blessed to be born uh, Native American, and, and that's a, a beautiful thing. But we have a, a White House that says we disrespect America. We disrespect America. What is America? America is the Constitution and our rights contained therein. We do not support our oath of office because we're walking away from checks and balances, freedom of the press and the rest. What is America? America is a nation of immigrants, and we will denigrate them as opposed to what Ronald Reagan said about immigrants and the constant vitality they bring to America. What is America? This beautiful land that God has given us from sea to shining sea and beyond. And this, nation, this administration is degrading of that beautiful environment as recently as yesterday with their dirty power um, scam that they put forth to diminish the air that our children breathe. What is America but our values? What are our values, which are uh, our values, our budget should be a statement of our national values. It's what is important to our country as to uh, um, what we think is important and how we invest in the future for our children. That's what we should be talking about. It it's, remains for the candidates to debate among themselves who among them will appeal. Joe Biden seems to have tremendous support in the African-American community, but it's for them to decide. It's not for me to make a judgment as to how they're going to, to react to him. That's what elections are about. Let's see who connects with the American people. Uh, let the election, uh, it's, not, it's not for us to say this is who we think should be the candidate for president. It's for the people to decide. So we can have this discussion here all we want while the president is calling an attack on our democracy a hoax, uh, while the administration is shutting down up the protections of clean air for our families. But that list goes on and on. So I'm not going to go to that place. I've said what I'm going to say about it and let them all debate it. We'll see that two nights next week, and I'm very excited about it because I think any one of them would be a better president than the current occupant of the White House. Um, back, to, excuse me, thank you, back to Iran. Yeah. What's your thank you for talking about an issue. <laughs> God forbid. Uh, what's your view on why tensions are rising between these two nations right now? Well, the, uh, let me just say that this uh, 
I'm was very much a sub strong supporter and uh, I think played an important role in protecting the Iran nuclear agreement. That is something that was very, very positive in stopping Iran, uh, slowing any process for a number of years as to Iran's intentions in terms of developing a nuclear weapon. When we walked away from that, we lost some credibility with our allies. I think what, however we go forward, without saying how we got here, however we go forward, we have to recognize that working together with our allies is very, very important, and that we cannot throw our weight around. You know, we have to do this together. I, we, there's nobody who has any illusions about Iran, their bad behavior in terms of who they support uh, in the region, uh, their uh, uh, spreading of ballistic missiles, and we have sanctions on all of that. But this is a dangerous neighborhood, and miscalculation on either side uh, could provoke something that would be very bad in terms of the security and our interests. So let's, I, I look forward to the briefing. I'll, I'll go there uh, with concerns about our, how we are not, how we should be doing better working with our allies, but also listening to what the intelligence has to say about it. I think it's really important. I said this to some of you at breakfast yesterday. It's important for the American people to understand what is happening there. Uh, how many articles, how many news reports did I read about attacks on ships that never said the ships were Saudi Arabian, were Norwegian, were Japanese, right at the same time when the Japanese prime minister or premier was at, in Tehran. So, you know, let's make sure that, uh, that we don't uh, have a, a beating the drum for something without the clarity of the facts involved. And again, our responsibility is to protect and defend our Constitution, the American people, our country. That's our first responsibility. That's what we will honor. Uh, but let's get, let us get the facts as to how we got to this place. I don't want to make any characterizations about it, but I will say uh, that we started to lose uh, credibility on the subject when we walked away uh, from the nuclear, uh, the Iran nuclear agreement. And this will have to be the last because we have the hearing. Thank you. I mean, the, the uh, briefing. Yeah. The chief of staff, Mike and Mick Mulvaney, suggested that you and, and Stephen Mnuchin suggested that you had changed your position. Last week you said you were with the Caps. Uh, Do we have to waste time on Mike Mulvaney's characterization of my remarks? I mean, I don't mean well, to interrupt is, you, but is, why do we preface, why do we preface, preface a question to me about Mike Mulvaney's mischaracterization of my remarks? I have, oh, we will never question the full faith and credit of the United States of America. It's in the Constitution of the United States. Mulvaney's one of the people who shut down government because they didn't want to lift the debt ceiling, and so he has no credibility on the subject whatsoever. So, my, I mean, I, I shouldn't even be engaged in any conversation that has him mischaracterizing. We have never said we would not lift the full budget. What we have said, though, is that we will fight for meeting the needs of the American people. I bragged at the beginning about the good work that the uh, Appropriations Committee is doing. Uh, we want to come as close to their number as possible in, in the discussions, and that uh, uh, when the Republicans threaten to, to not lift the debt ceiling, as you may recall, uh, a few years ago, just the threat of it just the threat of it, because it was a very legitimate threat and people were scared, lowered the credit rating of the United States of America. And he was part of that. So, I, you know, please don't predicate a, a characterization of a question from today. I have never changed my view on the subject. What we have said is we have to deal with these things sequentially, and we will. Thank you all very much.
One, two, three, four, five. There's so many 